We're a little further along in the lunar eclipse. About half the moon is now covered by the umbra, the darker part of the Earth's shadow on the moon. Because we have high cirrus clouds, um, we don't necessarily see much detail in the shadowed areas. Um, I'm expecting by now that there might be some hints of brown if it was perfectly clear. I am starting to see stars though. I can see the entirety of Orion off to the uh, lower left of the moon. And that's uh, a good sign that the clouds are thinning here. You'll notice again, uh, as in the last broadcast, the moon is slowly drifting across the field of view. Uh, that's because my telescope isn't tracking. And of course the earth is spinning. And so what we're seeing here is the rotation of the Earth magnified by the same factor that we've magnified the Moon. I'm going to reposition the view here manually and we'll let it drift across again. It's a beautiful night that's uh, quite still here. Um, I've got no breeze at ground level. Um, it looks like the clouds have been um, dissipating and partially uh, being blown um, eastwards from my location here. I am in northern Vulcan County uh, between Moss Lee and Carsland. I'm using an iPhone 11 Pro mounted to the eyepiece of an 8 inch diameter or 20 centimeter diameter Newtonian telescope. And we're just enjoying the lunar eclipse here on a very early Friday morning. The umbra, the dark part of the shadow, will not cover the entirety of the moon, so this will be a partial um, eclipse. Um, there will be a small portion of the moon that will stay in the penumbra, the uh, lighter portion of the uh, shadow. Um, if it was clear, I would imagine it would look to the unaided eye, if you're looking up at the moon, somewhat like Mars would look like in a telescope. And that is that the main disk of the moon would be kind of reddish brown, and there'd be a little white part, which on Mars, when you look at it telescopically, you see an ice cap on it. It's always struck me how similar these Lunar eclipses can look to the planet Mars, even though they're happening at very different scales and at very different distances from us here on Earth. I'm going to reposition once again this uh, telescope. It's on a Dobsonian mount, which is a, basically a very simply engineered alt-azimuth mount. So it swings up and down and left and right. It's a gorgeous night out here, actually. Because we had a fairly thick uh, blanket of clouds above us earlier this evening, uh, the temperature hasn't really dropped that far below freezing. So I'm here, I'm wearing a toque. I don't have gloves on at the moment, I have them with me. And uh, I think I could imagine seeing my breath, but it's it's not terrible out here. In the distance, I can hear a train. That's the CPR main line a few kilometers north of me. I hear some geese down at the Bow River. There were quite a few flocks flying towards the river uh, earlier this evening. And so what we're just watching here is the uh, Earth's shadow slowly shift across the face of the moon. This would have been a perfect full moon night, except for this darn rock we live on that's getting in the way of all the sunlight that would be 